uh, Tom has a really distinguished kind of, uh, kind of uh, resume here. He was at uh, uh, Director of Marketing at RCA. Uh, before that was Sales and Marketing at Noise International. He's worked with Dave Matthews, uh, Three Doors Down, The Bee Gees, Sister Hazel, Verve Pipe, Real Big Fish, Flaw, Stroke Nine, Goldfinger, Tonic, ZZ Top, Van Morrison, Robert Plant, and others in uh, marketing and product management. So please welcome Tom Durr. <laughs> so as I was kind of describing to Tom before we uh, sat up here, um, our students are, are divided in some ways. Um, a, a vast majority of them are uh, musicians and would like to sell their music in some capacity. Um, and then the other, other kind of percentage are ones that want to work on the other side, um, as, as you've done. Are you a musician yourself? Or? No. No, OK. So how, how did you find your way into this, this career? I started working in a record store selling 8-track tapes. I don't know how many of you know what an 8-track tape is, but uh, we sold that in bongs. That's what I did <laughs> when I was 15 years old. What did you sell more of? Uh, bongs. What is the yeah. thing that you could still sell today? Bongs. Yeah. Yeah. They're very, Class dismissed. They're very profitable. <laughs> very, very profitable. <laughs> and that, uh, that was my first job. I was 15 year, years old. I worked in the store for three years and decided that's what I was going to do and uh, pursued it since then. Okay. So what was the, the segue from selling bongs to, uh, <laughs> to selling uh, not bongs. Went on to uh, own my own store. I opened my own right record store. store for about four years. And then um, started my first real uh, record company job. I worked at A&M &M Records in New York. I worked in the uh, ma mail room for six months, which was an experience. And uh, today, you really can't start in the mail room because of the fact that most of the mail rooms are farmed out. Pitney Bowes does the mail room, and that's all con contracted mail room. When I worked in the mail room, I did everything. I mean, it was a great spot to be in because I got to experience a wide variety of things. I got to know things that most of the executives didn't know what, what was going on because I was the one delivering things. I was the one pick, picking stuff up from different places that someone shouldn't have known about or things like that and a variety of things, which was a great experience. It got me uh, to know a lot of people. and I, It was a really good start for me because it was a, a chance to experience a variety of the departments and really get a feel for which side of the business that I wanted to, uh, to pursue. Uh, from there, I got a job at a label called Noise, which was a small German label that was based in New, New York. It was based on the fourth floor of a uh, sweatshop in uh, Chinatown in New York, which was always an experience to get to, always an experience to walk through Chinatown. Uh, that was also a, a great experience for me, because not just was it a marketing job and a sales job, but because the staff was three people you did everything from making the calls to the retailers to making the calls for this and that and packing packages and sweeping the floor and painting the walls and a, a, a lot of stuff that went very, very well to learn uh, the variety of things to do. From there, I got the job as a product guy at R, R, RCA Records. I was there for four and a half years. I had the privilege of working with the uh, Dave Matthews Band where I worked with them from the start. The first time I saw Dave play was in a bar in New York called The Wetlands, where there was more people on this stage than there were, were <laughs> seeing Dave play. And the, the last time I saw Dave play was at the Meadowlands in uh, New York, which was about 60,000 people. And that was an experience that I will always remember being there from the growth, being there to, to, to not, not just to watch it grow, but to be involved, and to be involved with a very talented band and a very talented man and a very talented guy who's still the nicest guy you'll, you'll meet. He's still the same old guy. He's still the guy that would walk away from it tomorrow if that's what he had to do. He, he wasn't doing it for the cash. He wasn't doing it to be the famous. He was doing it because he, he enjoyed it and always reminded people that he would walk away. And, and, it, was, and it was a thing that I took to heart when I moved on to Un Universal and worked there for almost nine years and got fed up with the business the way it was and remembered back to what David said, that you can always walk away. It's not about it. And that's what I did. I was at U Universal one day, walked into my boss, wanted to speak to her. She didn't have time. Came back the next day. She wanted to speak to, I wanted to speak to her. She didn't have time. Came back the ne next day, finally had time. I spoke to her. I told her I quit, and I went home. And uh, that was the en end of that. And I took a year off 
to try to decide what I was going to do next and uh, to try to figure out the right way to do it in my own mind. And I think what, what, what we've created, people have told me that it's the right thing and bands have said it's the right thing. This is Rock Ridge. Rock Ridge, is your, yes, your, correct. Your new comp or how, how new is it? Uh, it's almost two, two years now. Two years, okay. And uh, it's developed into something that I'm very, very proud of. It's a lot of work, um, crazy stuff. But, it, but I wouldn't tr trade it for anything in, in the world right now, what I'm doing right now. It's interesting that you, you, know, you kind of set up these two arcs. Um, as I said, we've got students here that want to be musicians and want to work on, on the other side of the business. And the arc that you portrayed for Dave Matthews is parallel in some ways to, to your career arc in that you know, Dave was playing bars and everything, and you started at retail. And the trajectory is one of knowing the business all the way from from uh, you know every angle, and I think that it's um, you know this era of specialization. It's so important, especially in the record industry, to know how all the pieces work together. And it seems like, from what little I know about Rock Ridge, um, it's kind of a full service uh, marketing. Is that maybe the best way to say? We it? like to view it as a services company for service bands companies. because it's not just label. It's we don't. For, for, first off, the type of deals we do are licensing deals where the acts continue to own their art. We want the bands to continue to own their art. When you sign with a Columbia or Warner Brothers, they then own your art, and they will own your art for many, many years. When you say ago. art, you're inclusive music, of the, the music. The music and the uh, we license it so that we have a par partnership with the act, so that it's not a one-sided thing. We can only work as hard as the band works, and the band can only work as hard, 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 hard as we work. We don't make cash unless the art sells. And if the art, art sells, we make cash and the band makes cash. But the band continues to own the art. And if we part ways, the art goes with the band and doesn't stay with us. It's just a, it's just a conscious choice that we made. And people always say, well, you, then you're not building catalog and you're not doing this. But it really is a thing that if the relationship works between the label, the com company, and the band, catalog will remain because the band will stay. And if the band stays because the relationship is good, then it's going to work. If it doesn't work, and you have a piece of catalog where the band's not no long, longer in, involved and has moved on, then it's just not going to work. Because there's bands that I'm working with now that had records out on bigger companies. And their re records are being cut out by the big guys so that they can't even, you can't even go in and buy their record now. And the band can't get the record back because they don't own the rights or they can't afford the rights back. And now their record, you can't even buy it. So their art is not even available to be bought. And it just ruins things. It really ruins things for the band. I, I, I think it ruins things for the business. Um, it, it's, it's crazy. And we made a conscious choice to do it th this way. Even though people said it wouldn't work, you couldn't do it. And we are doing it. And it does work. So what, I mean, you, you kind of got fed up with the, the major label paradigm. You started your vision, which is a, somewhat of a reaction to the major label paradigm. Mm -hmm. what, what, did, what shifts? I mean, what beyond the term type of uh, setup where there's so who owns the master in this relationship? Is it the artist? The artists own the artist master. Does. They license it to you. Mm -hmm. What else is different about the way you're doing it than, say, the way Dave Matthews' label ATO is doing it? We well, a, a, ATO is probably a wrong wrong example. Okay, what's because, different than because because they, they they are doing it somewhat where there's patience involved. The big guys are looking at a w window when your record is re ready to come out. You have a six to eight week. Win window to make a record work. If it doesn't work in that six to eight, eight weeks, for the most part, the majority of acts, you're done. You're done. So you could be signed, released, and dropped within a 14-month period, literally. With us, it's not about the first six to eight weeks. It's about the first six, eight, 10, 12, 14 months. And, and it's about getting back to the way the record business was, where bands and acts have the ability to create Con, con, consistently and not put a record out every two or three years. We want bands who are going to release records every year or do digital releases where you release some B-sides B, B, B in, in, in the middle of the year or some live stuff or some extended mixes or some kind of thing just to, to, to create the catalog and to create what's going on, not just for the band and their out, outlet for their art, but for the fans to continue to get new stuff from a band that they really like. Instead of waiting two years to find out what's new from the band, they can constantly be able to go out and experience the band in new ways depending on what the bands are doing. We, we have a band that they went out, re, they, made a, they made, made a disc, they came back, we put out the B-sides, B, B they come back, put out a new thing, and now we're putting out a digital release in May 
which is four or five songs from those two re records totally redone by just one guy in the band, where he decided he wanted to do a country thing, that country song of that, and a blues song of that, and just different tracks that he really liked from the record to redo it, and he did it himself, and we're putting it out, just to, again, feed the fan, fan, fan base, to keep the fan base alive. Because if you wait two, two years, three years, by the time that new thing comes out, you're starting from zero again, and you're competing for people's time, you're competing for people's money, and you're comp competing for people's patience. And in today's world, as you all know, it's very quick. Everything comes and goes, disposable songs, and it, it's really about developing where people want to know about the acts. Most acts today, people don't care about. They don't care anything about them. The Beatles, when you, when you look, look at them, people want to know what their favorite song was, what their favorite color, what their fa favorite food. And today, you, you don't really get time to find out about these bands. You don't get time to, to experience what they're about, and not just on a per personal side, but from an art art side, they don't get a chance to develop their art because they're here and gone tomorrow. And then the bands that do succeed, they're forced into a thing of making hits. And then you don't really see their art because they're forced to write a hit, hit song, or they're forced to write that last song again. And that's not reality. You can't write the, the same hit, hit again. But people believe that you can, and the companies believe you can, because they have to generate enough cash to survive. So what, what specific kind of strategies are you doing to build this kind of long-term community around these bands to make fans care about what color was the favorite color of the lead singer or whatever. I mean, how, how specifically, because I mean, that's the goal, right? I mean, yes. that's, that's the goal for you. That's the goal for Warner Brothers. That's what, you know, they've got different economic <laughs> drivers, but <clears throat> it's still yes. the goal. They want, they want the Beatles in the same way you do. You don't have uh, shareholders, nope. I suppose, breathing down your neck. But what, what strategy? I mean, what, how do you do this? Is taking the act of the people, is taking, is getting the band touring, is the inter internet is, is a huge tool for us because it's, it's free or cheap and it, and, it, and it allows the bands to interact directly with their fans. It allows the bands to get directly to the fans without having to go through radio or through a program director who's going to have all these rules about what he can play and what he can't, can't play. It allows visibility to grow at a fa faster pace. It then allows the fans themselves to pass on what they like to their friends. They don't depend on some, someone else. They can pass that track along directly. You can hear things immediately. You, you, you don't have to wait. When you're looking through a magazine, you read a piece, or you see a, an, an ad, you can't. You go, oh, I have to ch check that out. When you're on the net, you can hear it. You can react to it. You, you can experience it. But how it. do you drive people? I mean, MySpace has 250,000 bands on it, I'd say. 249.99 of those have never been heard by anybody. Yes. Um, they just released their first MySpace Volume 1 records, which has been a complete and utter failure. Um, how, so the tools themselves aren't, it's, it's how you use the tools. Exactly. I guess what I'm trying to get at is what, what is it you're doing? MySpace, Every band has access to the, the net. My, MySpace to us is a necessary thing. It's not a thing we do. If my partner was here, he'd tell you my, MySpace can go fuck themselves. Um, because he just believes it's a bunch of bullshit. Because you can, you can control what goes on there, whether you believe it or not. If you go to a band that has 25,000 friends and their songs have been played 25 times each, there's a problem there. Some, something's not connecting. We are hired by bigger lab labels to create friends so that their bands look bigger than they are on My, MySpace. And why the big guys are all talking about MySpace and doing their, creating friends and whatever the hell they're doing. We're going to all the smaller sites that, are, that people are going to to discover new, new stuff because the big guys can't do it because they have too many rules, they have too much red, red tape, too much control. And these sites, these sites like, uh, like the, the various mu 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 music sites that are on the net, the only way they survive is to have con content. And we can supply them with tons of con content. So we get the visibility that Columbia or Warner Brothers doesn't get, because by the time Columbia decides that they are going to do it, it's already too late, and that band's been dropped, and the band's being signed by us because they've been dropped, and then we're going to go do the right thing for them. And then we go ahead and work, work with them and supply them with content, supply them with new, new stuff, and not just the smaller sites, but the bi bi bigger sites too because of the, the red tape. We do in, independent mar 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 marketing, not just for our own acts, but for bigger lab lab label acts, and those big labels pay us to do the things that they can't do because there's too much red tape for them to do the things that we can do. Are you do. talking about hitting the blogs and, and 
the, the company, even videos, whatever. even vi videos. Like if you go to a so Sony label, they have a deal with either AOL, mm -hmm. AOL or Yahoo, where only their videos are seen there. They give us a video and we go place it all around the net. I see. But the the guy hi hiring us can't do it because it's he he will get in trouble and the lawyers will go nuts. Sure. And all, all, all there's all kinds of red tape, but we don't have that. And it's especially that with our, our our own acts, we have the ability to spread it more, to spread it wide, wider, and to spread it quicker. So I would assume then with your bands, there's something provisionally in the contract that allows for you to take their masters and license them or you know, place yes. them wherever you can, um, including giving them away? 99% I mean, of our bands allow us to give stuff away on the net. Okay. The band, people who are afraid of giving away stuff on the net or giving away a song only ha have a song. It's the bands that have more than one song that are not afraid of it. The bigger guys are afraid that you guys are going to find out that the rest of the record sucks and that you'll only want to go to iTunes and buy that one song, which is probably what a lot of you do because you find out the rest of the record are 11 songs that probably shouldn't have made it onto a record. So a uh, band from Loyola calls you up and, and says, we want you to... <laughs> calls well, me at home? Calls you at home late at night, you know. <laughs> says, you got any more of those bongs left? Um, and wants you to... They're uh, all sold out. They're all sold out, so you say. Uh, wants, to, wants to hire you, right? And I don't know that you, you know, hypothetically, like you, this would be something you... What, what do you do? I mean, what's, what's, what's stage one? To hire us to, to market or to sign it. to the label. Either one. There's two different I, I'm things. I'm trying to get at... Okay, well, what, if, like, like if you we, sign we, someone to the label, yes. I'm try, what I'm trying to get at is for these students to walk away with, with some advice so that they say, okay, well, this is what this guy who's living this and doing it would do with music to start building this community, to start building it so that people would care. And I think, I mean, that's the holy grail. If, if any of us could, could do that magically, you know. But you have some insight into this, and I, I guess I'm just trying to pick your brain a little for bit. For a band to, that just got signed? No, for a band that, that's not yet signed. Not yet signed. For a band that's trying to okay. build a fund, because I, I don't think anyone here is, is signed to a major. Maybe they are. But um, if you are, run. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> Get a check and then run. Yeah, get the check and then get run. the check. Um, life changing check. So, I mean, what, what's the what should bands be doing, or what do you do? For first bands? off, first off, it com comes down to a song, it, and not not just one. It's mul multitude of songs because we can create smoke and mirrors. We can create the the vibe that you may want or the vibe you may not want. We can create the visibility. We can create all that stuff. But without the songs, you're you're just gonna you're just gonna spin spin your wheels. So that's the real first step is to really either feel the songs, get the songs, or if the songs aren't there completely, there's people that we work, work, work with who will hear a thing and go, okay, they ha have it. You, you can't have a seven and a half minute song with no chords, but, but, but they have the feel for it and they have the ta talent and they have this or they have that or just j just the vibe about it. And how do they know if they have the song? I mean, everybody thinks that they're, you know, Jimmy Page. You know, that becomes they... that becomes what 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 we're trying to build. Whether you're creative or you're ta talented or not, don't base on s someone like us saying we don't want to work work okay. with you right now because that's nothing should stop you from continuing to, to create your art. There's just things that we know we can work work with. There's things that we know we can't work 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 with. And then there's then there's things we have to make make a choice about bands too. There may be a great band who has great songs, but if they can't tour because two of the guys are married and they, and the one guy has four four kids and needs a full time job, which which we look at we look at that with bands. We say, okay, do you all hold full time jobs? Can can you tour? I'm not here to pay your rent. I'm not here to pay your phone bill. I'm here to sell discs. I'm here to sell art. So if you guys can't, if, if the band can't go out and tour, we really look at that. We have, sure. those, we have those talks with the band prior, and bands will lie their way. Oh, no, we'll go out and tour. We'll, you know, we'll do this. We'll do that. It, it, ne it never take, takes place because they're too tied down to, sure. well, to, to life itself. If you've to life got an itself. unlimited budget. Or so do you, do, you, do you pay tour support for the bands you work no. with? Do you uh, give bands advances, personal no. advances? No, we do no advances. Okay, so no you, tour you're support. not going to sign a band that basically isn't on the road already? Given that, not necessarily. It can be a band who can who we can put on on the road. Okay. We have plenty of people to work with to get you on the road. Bands have to know how to survive on a dime, and when I mean a dime, I mean a dime. <laughs> um, yeah. It's it's not about us feeding the band money to stay out on tour. You the bands have to pay pay their dues. They have to do their work. 
there's too many bands who get signed to a big label, and I've experienced this, where they get signed and they think their job is done, and they're going to sit back and wait for the cash to roll in. And then when they go on tour, they want to be in the bus, and they, they want to have the road crew of 25, and they want to stay at the, you know, at the, at the Ritz and all that stuff. That's, that's not reality. That's just not reality. You have to be able to pay, pay the dues, work it out, get on the road, tour, develop with your fans, right. and wor work it. And then we develop it by, by adding to the things that the bands can do, by getting records into stores, by getting it on, online, by getting it into the right pl pl places, by working the press ang angles. So all of the things that you said before, you, you kind of said, and then you get involved, the tour and all that, I mean, that's something bands should be doing. Or should bands be doing that, in your opinion, before they get a deal? Absolutely. Okay. Most, mo most of the bands that we get involved with initially are booking themselves. I'm sure most of you guys are in bands, book your own shows. And then when you get signed, you think you're going to have a booking guy. The booking guy is the hardest thing you're ever going to do. Harder than a record deal. It's the hardest thing. Har har harder than a deal, harder than a lawyer, harder than making cash, sure. finding a booking guy. Because most of the booking guys who are good don't have time, and the guys who are bad have too much time. Mm -hmm. So for bands to continue to book themselves is the right thing to do. It's a lot of work, and bands complain. But what, what we try to do with our acts is, is have the bands help one, 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 one another with either connections to clubs, connections to promoters. Hey, why don't you come out west and tour with us, and we'll come back east and tour, tour with you so that we, we can make enough money on the west coast so that we can tour the east coast with, with you so that, so that you can then develop some more mar markets as opposed to just going out and playing the West all the time. Sure. And they, the, the other thing bands do when they get signed is they initially say, I want to go out and tour, tour the U.S. Well, if you can't sell stuff in your own backyard, what makes you think you're going to sell records in Seattle? Right. It's, it's just not going to work. Like we had, we had met with, with a band one night, and their goal was to be the biggest band in New York. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't define what that was, mm -hmm. and neither could I. So I, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know what I was going to do to help them get to that point. And it was being set, set up to fail. Because if we didn't make, it, make them the biggest band in New York based on what they thought, then we failed. Mm -hmm. But we, they couldn't define what that was, so we had already failed before we began. Measurable so it's a goals. band that we can't, we can't deal with. We just can't. It's just not reality. So what, so what are you looking for in a band? I mean, what, I mean, besides the songs obviously have to be there. Um, I think we've identified that they have to have been torn at least regionally. Um, is that it? I mean, is it, what else is there? It, it, it really comes down to band, 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 band to band. Some bands have a really good vibe about them. Like there's bands that I'll get on the phone, phone with and speak to, and you know right then whether it's going to work or yeah, not. Sure. You just know just by the way they talk, by the way they act, by the fact that they don't talk. And there's bands you get on the phone and you like, <laughs> and they don't say, say a thing because they have no questions, they have no comments, right. they have no vision for themselves, and that's the worst thing. One thing that a band's got to come with is what they're what they're about what they're going gun, gun, to do, what they want, want to do, and what they have to do. Those are all di di different things. And if bands come to us without that, we can make it up. Trust me, I've made, made it up plenty of times. Made up the story. For made the up band. the story, made up the ideas. But, it, it, but eventually, it's going to fall, fall apart. It's like telling a lie and then telling another lie. And eventually, you're going to get caught up in the fact that you don't even know what's going on and what is real and what is not real. But then it's going to come back to the songs. And most of the time when you're lying about it, you're usually lying about the art as well. Okay, so we've talked a lot about the one side of the bands and what they need to be doing. What if somebody wants to be you? You know, how do, how do you <laughs> what, get a hat? Um, what, what, what someone needs to do Always wear to, a get to, uh, to get to your stage, be it working at a label and eventually starting your own? Or? Get in any way you can. Don't, don't, don't think that a job is below you. Don't think that... Money is below you. You're going to have to struggle. You're going to have to try. I'm sure there's going to be someone in this room who's going to step into, a, step into shit and get the greatest job in the world because that's just the way it is. But for the mo mo most part, you're going to have to pay, pay your dues. People that are going to be on top of you are going to look to see what you've done and what you've tried and what you've done and because they know that their job is what you want. Mm -hmm. So they're going to protect themselves a bit because in this day, day and age, the record companies continue to shrink, and all the people who have the jobs are more worried about you taking their job than they are about hi hiring you. And they may end up hiring someone that they can control and that they can put, put, push around as opposed to someone who can take their job. Now, it used to be that, that the, the goal was in the business was to hire someone that you know could take your job. But because jobs have shrunk, 
that doesn't go down. So you really have to pay, pay your dues, prove yourself, and prove yourself to a variety of pe pe people, and learn as much, much as you can. I mean, there, there were things that I, I learned way back. I'm like, why, why am I talking to this lawyer? Why, why am I knowing what he does? And now all the deals that we do, I do all the deals. I write the deals, negotiate the deals, everything. We don't use a lawyer, because I don't like lawyers. If there's a lawyer in the room, sorry. But, but they are in the business to make cash, and we don't pay bands up front, so they don't make any cash from us. Or they're in the business to charge bands by how long they take to negotiate a deal, because they charge $400, $500 an hour, and I don't negotiate well. So they're going to get about $200, because I'm not going to negotiate for weeks and days. <laughs> I'll just walk, walk away, because we have the, the ability to. We have enough bands coming to us. We have enough pipeline. That we that we can do, do do that we do the deals our way, and the deals are fair. Uh, we we let the bands own own art, which is a major major thing, and that's the the clout that we carry is that we allow the bands to continue to own their art. So the rest of the points when bands want to negotiate from 17 percent to 16 percent, I don't we don't have time that for that. We're talking about one percent that could end up being over the term of a deal. $300. I mean, come on, it's just not worth the time of day right. to deal with that. But a lawyer d does that because they feel that they they can go back to the band and say, hey, I, I got it from 17 mm -hmm. to 16. I did a great job for you. Now here's, my, now here's my bill for four grand. And the band goes, well, we don't have four grand. Right. And then they come to call us to pay label. it. Yeah. Then they call yeah. us to pay it. And I'm not paying it because why would I pay I'm a lawyer to negotiate, negotiate against, against me yourself. when I'm not going to negotiate? Been there, yeah. Um, <laughs> So one of the things you said that I thought was interesting is you, you either, did you say you ran a record store or you mm -hmm. worked? Okay. Oh, um, no. I mean, I, when I was hiring people, I always looked for people that had retail experience. Um, and I think it's so you know, important, even today in the, in the download area, because they're right there at the customer. They're, they're doing battle. Every You're seeing what people want and yeah. don't want. Yeah. And getting to, getting to know the customer. Is, Many is times so you have personal. people coming. Did you ever work with retail? Oh, yeah. You have people come in and sing, and sing to you? They come in and sing, but my, my best trick was that as soon as they walked through the door, I could know what they wanted before they even had to say it. So I would just shepherd them right to the Edie Brickell record, you know, and <laughs> wouldn't even, this is, I'm dating myself, but um, that's, uh, you know. A-track. It wasn't A-track. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, you know, retail is still important. Absolutely. Um, more, maybe more interestingly to the audience, where is, uh, where is the industry going? you think at this point? Retail will always exist because people will always want to shop. People want, you know, when, the, when people first start shopping online, everyone said, oh, you'll buy all your clothes online, you'll buy all your, your this online. You know, people pet still food. want to shop, right. pet food online, whatever. You, you still want to go out and shop. It's still social. It's still an experience. People still say, hey, let's go shopping. Let's, let's go to the mall. Let's do this. So you're, you're still going to have, ha have that. But the great thing about digital-wise is the instant gratification of things and the, the way that before band, bands would call from the road and go, we're in shithole uh, here, and people can't buy our buy our disc here. Now when they do that, I'll go, what, what are you, insane? So I mean, they can go to Starbucks, get on a computer, and buy the record. Right, right. And you can buy a down, download, you can buy at bestbuy.com, walmart.com, whatever you want to do. So is your model the future then, not owning equity and the copyrights and uh, you know, kind of term licenses and creating a it's not, you said you do booking on some, so it's kind of like a full service thing. We don't um, do booking. Oh, you don't. That's okay. illegal. I thought you for said us you could help. No, that's illegal. We can help you find someone. But you can't be both an agent no, and a manager. That's illegal. Right. Okay. Um, but so you. We help. do nothing illegal. No, I know you're you're just practicing law without a license as a, a lawyer. But, uh, <laughs> it's not law. <laughs> Something resembling contracts law. are only what worth what they're written on. So you and can sue for whatever you want. So. And, um, and we haven't been sued yet, so we're not re a real company yet. That's right. <laughs> You're not real till you're sued. That's right. So what's the best uh, piece of advice you've ever gotten? Don't burn a bridge. No matter what a person does, does to you, and trust me, I've, I've, been, I've had strange things done, and, but don't burn a bridge. The business is too small. No matter how big you think it is, and even worldwide, it's small. And if you burn, burn, burn a bridge, most of the time it's going to come back to bite you in the ass because that person's going to show up again, whether it's on your side or on the other side, and uh, you're, you're going to feel like an ass. Just don't burn a bridge. Um, you can yell and scream behind the door, but once you're, hey, how's it going, nice guy? Well, speaking of that, how important is publishing to your, uh, your business? It's a, it's a part that we want to develop, too, but it's not a part we're dealing with right now. The bands pretty much own their own 
okay. publishing, and I would suggest that most bands that don't need cash keep your publishing. That's where the money is. But That's where got, the big money is. You've got master usage, so are you out going to try trying to exploit the, the masters to film or yeah. TV? Or we have a person on, on staff who s services all, all of our stuff to TV and film and commercials and video games. And since we don't own the, the, the rights, we, we, get, we get a piece of what the placement is based on our deals with the bands. Uh, best part of working in the industry? It's fun. It's fun. And it has to be fun. Yeah. As soon as it do doesn't become fun, get, get out. Yeah. Because then it's, I mean, it's, we're not trying to cure a disease. Yeah. We're not trying to save lives here. We're, you know, we're having fun, and it's art, and you're supposed to experience it. You're supposed to enjoy it. As soon as it becomes serious, and that's, that's when I quit. I was just like, you, you guys are out of your minds. I'm out of here. Mm. What's the skill that you think you got to have to succeed? Know what's b bull bullshit and know what's not. That's, that, that's why when I go back to what I said about learning about everything you can, the, the different departments, so that when the guy from the promotion department comes and starts giving you the shtick, you already know he's lying through his teeth, and then you can figure out what, what he, reality he, has is. Has he opened his mouth? They don't have to, no. no they don't have to. <laughs> Radio guys don't. Promotion but, guys. But just, you know. to, but just to know what's, what's crap and what, what's not. That's right. very important because you can get caught, caught up in things. MySpace.com, you, you can get caught up. Oh, they have 10,000 friends. Well, yeah, they have 10,000 friends because they paid us $3,000 a month to create 10,000. Is that really? I mean, that's part of your, oh, your yeah. business. Yeah. So they come to you and they say, go get us a big profile, a good friend. Yeah. And how do you do it? You sit around and just... I don't know. The staff does. That. I don't even. Know. <laughs> you don't want to know. Yeah, that's so interesting. <laughs> no, I don't want to know. No, yeah. No, but but that's but that's just part of the world. That's like no, I know. radio. It's like I know. you you start getting spins and you pay some guy to call the state station forty five times a day. It's the same thing. You just and then there was a time in the world which probably still exists where you can pay people to scan the records in stores that don't sell. Sure. And that that was done big time. There's many many acts. Well, the real start of their is, career is, is going to uh, stores that scan like ten to twenty to one and paying somebody to do that. You know, you go to like Omaha, where a sound Homer, scan, yeah, you know, or yeah. Homer's, yeah, where they'll do it's twenty sale to one and just get some dude to scan it fifty yeah. times. You know? That's done. Oh yeah, I think people still pay to do it. It's mm. crazy. Mm. Um, so, what would you do differently looking back on your career? I probably wouldn't have left R RCA when I did. Really? I probably should have wrote out the Dave and Matthews well, thing a bit longer. Yeah. Um, it's always hard to leave a job like that when you, quote unquote, become attached to an act or become attached to a project because you spend so, so much time doing it that you become part of that, that world. And what, what's great about that world is that I'm still a part of that world as a friend. I'm not mm -hmm. a part of that world as a job. Right. But I'm yeah. part of that world as a friend, which I, which I cherish to this, this day. It's just like friends of mine that, that I know that were involved when the police wrecked, mm -hmm. when the police broke. And they know what it was like to, to, to break the police. Or a friend of mine who worked the U2 you, you, you when, when the war, war, war record broke. Those are things you always cherish, and those are always the things that are hard to give up, yeah. and the things that you come to regret right. a bit because you could have wrote, wrote it out. But I mean, if 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 that's my biggest concern right now, you've done I'm, real well. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Really, and I also regret giving up the big check, but that was alright. Well, it is. I, I mean, you, you take you take. I mean, going doing anything entrepreneurial is a is a life changing type of uh, yeah. You type give of, up yeah. the security. You give up the security. Yeah. So what's the what's the upside? I mean, what's the freedom? Freedom. Yeah. To come here today, yeah. to go to Baton Rouge tonight on the Y, though. that's fun. <laughs> I'm going to Baton Rouge tonight. Yeah. But. Um, questions from you all? I don't know what, what our time frame is. Yes? He had a solo record called uh, Dreamland, and uh, I was uh, assigned that as a project. And surprisingly, he's a very nice guy. He's a wonderful guy. And... Uh, too hand, hands-on to a certain point. He would call me at home. He would call me on the train when I'm commuting in. He would call me when I was at my son's game. Or he would, I mean, he would just call me all the time to want to know what's going on here. What's, it was great because Robert Plant's Robert calling Plant. you. And it, was, it was pretty fucking cool. Mm -hmm. Coolest thing with, with Plant, we were at the plaza one day. And we were in, in his suite. And uh, I had to a ask him to give me some quotes for another project that was going on. And he goes, uh, that's really not what I'm about. The, the quotes wouldn't mean a thing. But let me make a call. And he calls Jimmy Page on the phone. <laughs> which, I said, can I get that number? But it was pretty cool. And I'm sitting with Plant, and he's calling Jimmy Page. So that's pretty cool. 
<laughs> I didn't get the number. Right. Mm -hmm. Other questions? <coughs> Sean. <coughs> That's the way it is right now, but we're going to expand. Uh, we're yeah, I mean, if, if there's a band that fits, like right now we're talking to a country band out of Texas. He's a 21-year-old kid from the U U University of Texas. And he writes great songs, and he's got a great fo following, and uh, it's something we're going to pursue. It's not that I'm, I, I know that market well, but I know enough people that I can learn that marketplace, and it makes sense for us. And if he can sell stuff, then uh, I'm thrilled about that as well. So. How, how would you find a 21-year-old kid at, at the University of Texas? I mean, how did he come on your radar? My son found it. Huh? Yeah, oh. MySpace. On MySpace. Yeah. Now he look. said, "This is cool." You sure they hadn't hired you to? Well, first, first thing that I did was when my son brought it to me was <laughs> Are we, we working this? <laughs> is that we went out and checked it out. We found out what was real. Okay. Not just speaking to the band, but speaking to the fans and finding out if these people really knew the band. Well, and it turns out that most of these, their friends have seen them six, uh -huh. seven, seven times, have bought the r record. We investigate it. Because many times we go to investigate a, a band on my, MySpace or just the net in gen general. And a lot of it's made up. A lot of it's smoke and mirrors. And you find out that these guys are pretty good liars. You're going to give your son points on the record? He's already signed two bands, and yes, he does He's have points. He's got points, points on yes. good. Okay. Other questions? Sean has a follow-up. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you because you're going to sign him. I haven't right. signed him yet. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was your first real lesson. <laughs> yeah. Masters are owned by them. You will find out that that is huge. And more beyond that you can ima imagine right now is to own your art. Because if you don't, when you leave that company in three years, you can say, man, I'd really like to redo that song. And you can't. So you don't you have re-record restrictions either? No, I'm saying we do. Uh -huh. we, during the li license, I'm saying if, if you're with another company. No, I, no, I know that but a band on your label could re-record after they leave with you immediately? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, you but, can't, it, but it you can, can be real. You can't get people out to the shows. I mean, is that part of your thing? You can't, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I did a and for a long time, and, and it was pretty. That's up to the manager. If they hire us, we're there to create the visibility. To create, Online. To create the, the want to go uh -huh. to a show. We, we can also release digital stuff as well in conjunction with the vi visibility so that you can start to show sales through Napster and Reel and stuff like that as well. Yeah, but not sound scan and you can't get people out to the, to the show. I mean, we just, can sound, sound scan you, product that shows. Oh, through a show, okay. Yeah, we can do that too for bands. Gotcha. And yeah. we do do that. What do you mean with that? With one particular act, or one particular act? How how are, how is that act going to uh, start recruiting? Start making money? I, I mean, most this sounds kind of like a, a a dream label. Most labels have that six weeks after the release because <laughs> yeah. they got to be making money. Or, well, we're 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 in a position where we don't need to make forty-eight million dollars in week one. If I made forty-eight dollars in week one, you wouldn't see me. I'd be gone. But uh, we have time, and we have the ability to work work with bands and to develop them. To go from okay, right now it's just about touring. Next step is about okay, let's develop a press profile. Then let's develop touring outside of that world. Then let's maybe take it to satellite radio and develop it there. Let's take it to in internet radio. It's constantly growing it. It's not just doing the same thing for fourteen months. If you're doing the same thing for four, fourteen months. You're right, you're not going to make any money, and you're not going to sell any discs. Because the bottom line is to sell the art. And it, the only way to do it is to, is to sell the art, spread the word. So you have to continue to grow the fan, f fan base. And it's just different things that get done. You may start with the internet stuff, with all the lower level stuff, visibility, gain some cred, and then take it to the next le level of sites, or take it to the next le level of what's going to get done. And then what you're doing by releasing 
B-sides and stuff like that is continuing to build the, the base. You're continuing to feed your base of fans while you continue to grow beyond that. Bands sometimes forget about their base and they let the base go and what happens when your base leaves, you fall apart and then there's no one to go to so that when you release the next record, you have some place to start. You have your, your, your base to start, start with. So you can't let that base deteriorate or you'll, you'll fall apart. There's too many bands that forget about that. They go on and then they don't know why they can't, they can't sell their next record because they forgot about their fans. You know, they went on to sell four, 14 million records and the next record sells 14 because their fans went away. Their fans found something else to do. You didn't serve them. You didn't create for them. And if it takes you three years to put another record out, they're gone. They're gone on some, something else. So it's not just doing one thing. It's, it's, the, it's the growth of the project and the growth of the band. Can the band pull it off? It's That's, amazing. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but what you're doing is in some ways kind of what labels used to do. Yes, you know? absolutely. I mean, it's, like you, you, it's just amazing that we look at this as like, wow, what a novel idea. It's you not. Know? It's, and it's, you know, it's really part and parcel to why I think the industry is in such a sad state of affairs. Well, look at, look, look at some Springsteen wouldn't exist. Of Dylan course. wouldn't exist. You too wouldn't exist. I mean, no, nope. none of these bands none were of bands overnight would exist. kind of nope. six-week type. Uh, you think Springsteen's stuff. first record would have been a hit? He would have been pumping gas in Red Bank. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? Yeah. <sighs> oh, uh, uh, one thing that I did learn is start with more cash than you think, think you need, for one. Uh, although we did not, and we have benefited from that, the fact that we don't have shareholders breathing down our throat. It gives us the free freedom. And, and get involved with the right people. Get involved with the minimum amount of pe people who can do the most work. Because when you, like I see people starting up late labels who have a staff of 12 and they haven't put a record out yet, uh, that's a problem. Because your, your mon monthly nut will kill you. You don't need the all, all office space on Park Ab Ab Avenue in New York. You don't need the limos to the to the plane. You don't need first class. You have to really you have to really put it together, knowing that every dime that comes in, eight cents is going to go right back out. So you have to really watch what you're doing. So I mean, I don't know if that responds to what you're saying, but I think it's the people, and my gut would say, you find more cash than you think you're going to need, because you'll end up needing it some, somewhere. It's a struggle, but it's but again, it's freedom and control. Absolutely. Rockridgemusic.com. He's Googling it right now. Yeah. Okay, well, oh, I'm sorry, Lucy. Uh, what is the size of the bases of the different artists? Do you vary or do you have an ideal size for the bass? For the bass for the band? Yes. Yeah. Some of the bands have zero bass when we start with them. Right. But it depends, I mean, it depends on why we sign, sign the band. Some bands, we, there's a band that, that, that we just signed that I hope their, their record sucks. I mean, it just sucks. But people go to see them live. I mean, they draw 400, 500 people a night. I have no idea why. But they, they, they tour and they tour strong. I, I couldn't even get through the first part of the record. You've it signed was, fish. No. <laughs> I would take fish. But I mean, the, the record sucks, but they have a nice touring base. Good guys, smart guys, they, they know what they're doing. So your hope there is that they, they have a fan base, they'll yes. build it, and then they'll eventually make a great record. Or we'll help them make a great record, too. So that's a sure. di different thing, too. Sure. I mean, the base can be zero. The base can be 50,000. That, that's just part of what we deal with to make a decision to deal with a band or not. If it's zero, you have a goal? Once we have a plan, we'll have a goal. Because one, one, one of the worst things that is done is lab labels will pick a date. We're going to put the record out on this date. And then they let the date dictate the planning. The planning should dictate the date. As soon as you let the date dictate the plan, you're dead. Then you start doing things you wouldn't do. You start spending cash you wouldn't spend. You start doing things in a shorter period of time. You don't allow things to grow correctly. You have to let the planning dictate the date or the goal. Because if you just say, OK, I want to sell 10,000 records, well, I could say that every day of the week. And it sounds really good. And sometimes I do say it, depending on who I'm speaking to. But for the mo mo most, most part, I can't think that way. I have, I have to think about what am I going to do to get to this step and then this step. 
and this date and that date. Because bands always say, oh, we have to have the record out by this date. Our fans can't wait. I'm sorry to say the only one waiting for that record is you. Nobody else is waiting for it. Everyone else is going to school or going out to eat or playing video games. Well, you have to make them. You have to make them want that right record. And if the fans want it now, you got to make them want it more, so that they're telling their friends about it, so that their four friends then want that record. So you have to. You have to be able to plan correctly and not pick a date and say, "Oh, we have to have it out then." Which I, I've I've done when I work for the big guys. Sure. It's like uh, this. This record. Yeah. This record's got to come out on this day because we need the billing for that month. Sure. And that record would come out, and that record could be dead before it comes out. The band could be dropped before the record comes out. I want to thank you so much. This has thank been great. you. <laughs>